Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my reactions to Xbox Fan Fest 2017, and actually going to E3 2017. So, I overall had two different experiences for this. I really enjoyed the Xbox Fan Fest 2017, and I really didn't like actually going to E3. So, with Xbox Fan Fest, that entailed, like, going to the Xbox E3 media briefing, and, like, doing activities and everything that were planned by Microsoft and the Xbox team. And that, overall, was pretty cool. So, we'd, like, go pretty much meet up at a location, and then we were, like, shuttled over to the E3 briefing. And it was really awesome being in an E3 briefing and not just watching it on a TV. Now, I say that for just being in the briefing because... You're surrounded by fans, you're surrounded by, like, the journalists and all that, and getting everything up close and seeing everything on, like, that 4K screen that they were showing was pretty cool. And I overall enjoyed myself at the E3 briefing, but, of course, I kind of had some mixed reactions with what was going on inside the briefing itself. I liked that they showed a lot of diversity of their games. Am I interested in playing all of them? Not exactly, but I liked that they didn't just stick with, like, what this console has been usually known for is, like, the shooter box. We did get, of course, shooters and all that, but we saw, like, stuff like Crackdown 3, which is what I, I'm really excited for. Sea of Thieves for, like, the big stable of the first-party things that Microsoft was showing us. And then all the different kind of stuff that they had exclusivity for, at least for the about a year. I don't know exactly what their thing is, but like Player Unknown Battlegrounds, I'm interested in maybe playing that. And all the different kind of things, like Assassin's Creed looked good, Anthem looked really interesting. I'm really going to see what's going on with that because that could potentially be what we thought Destiny could be if it has an emphasis, a strong emphasis on story and on being able to do stuff with your friends. It looks like it's going more with the four-player kind of co-op team rather than the three that's in Destiny. So the games-wise was pretty cool. And seeing that we're going to have original Xbox backwards compatibility really kind of cements that Microsoft is trying to make this into a PC kind of experience where you can keep bringing games forward with you. Now, granted, not all, but... It's interesting. Of course, then we see the whole reveal of the Xbox One X. And I was a little disappointed in the price. At $499, i am like, that's kind of pretty much what we got in for with the Xbox One. I kind of wanted them to come out the gate really pushing and hammering on Sony. And really having a competitive price with them. Because I thought if they came in at this price point that we would see Sony retaliate in kind and cut maybe the PlayStation 4 Pro by $50. But of course, we see that Sony didn't do that. And I'll talk about Sony's press conference and like the rest of the other press conferences in, in other videos. So I was kind of disappointed with that. But I understand that we have now entered a realm that's kind of interesting for Xbox in that they have different target demographics for each kind of Xbox One experience. With the S, they are pretty much gunning for what they say, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro by being the cheaper option, and that that's going to be their workhorse, which I think is an interesting strategy and will probably really, hopefully work out for them at the end because it's the cheaper option and, both, and games will still play better on the S compared to the original Xbox One and won't be as completely left behind by the Xbox One X. The biggest kind of issue that's going to start going into effect is I think that Microsoft and Sony kind of made a misstep in kind of just doing mid-generation upgrades. I think that if they felt that 4K and upgrading the power of their consoles was completely needed, a new generation needed to kickstart off. Completely. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say and piss off a lot of people because it's like, we just got in this generation. But I truly think that th this whole generation has had a big misstep. As you can see with the Xbox One, then the PlayStation 4, 
they've needed to upgrade to 4K because of how lagging behind we are. Now, granted, 4K is just getting into its own, but I think that Microsoft should have, in all actuality, probably held off on an Xbox One X until such a time that 4K and VR had a higher adoption rate and actually made it into a new generation, chose to start a new generation and try and lock in exclusives that way. Because I feel that, yes, the Xbox One X is more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. But now we're running into the thing that probably held the PlayStation 4 Pro four back with multiplex is that they have to cater to the Xbox One. So now the Xbox One X is going to have to cater to the PlayStation 4 Pro, and I believe that means that multiplats are going to be more checkerboard 4K rendering. And people, like, get into the semantics of, like, that's not true 4K, and then having the true 4K, like, oh, the Xbox One X should do that, and people are like, why aren't these multiplats doing that? Because... If that's the case, then they should just be exclusive on the Xbox One X. And, of course, <laughs> developers are not going to go with that yet because we don't know how big of an install base they're going to get for the Xbox One X. I believe that Microsoft does not think it is going to be the biggest install base for their customers. Same with Sony and the PlayStation 4 Pro. So... This is mainly to get the idea of 4K gaming out there before they will probably eventually both get into the effect of starting a new console generation and getting into, like, the next gen. Because it's really weird trying to, ha trying to develop for all these different SKUs for the Xbox and PlayStation, where traditionally... You have one box for one company and one box for another company, and any kind of slim or advanced model that comes out is not enough of a deal breaker to completely change it. PC, of course, is more used to this because you have all different kinds of rigs. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Xbox One X. I'm still excited and probably going to get it because I need an upgrade for this because I've only got 500 gigs in there, but I mean, I've got more external hard drives hooked up to it for storage, but it's a one terabyte hard drive that I could be getting, and of course, that's why I've held off on the S, because I'm like, well, they're doing a more powerful one. We'll see kind of how that goes. So that was my main just kind of like disappointment with the conference, and my other disappointment was we didn't get a giant, like, not even a giant. I knew they wouldn't be able to get like, a lot of first-party things out there to contend with. We've pretty much just seen anything that's going to be coming in about a year's time frame, which I kind of like, but it's also the disadvantage of, like, where are your, like, first-party things? We need more first-party things on Xbox One X to have it succeed to show up the 4K capabilities of it. That's, those are the kind of main concerns that I had while watching the conference. But granted, I was completely excited to be sitting there and like cheering with the crowd and seeing all this stuff. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then we went back and we went and we just kind of like did more activities, seeing kind of Xbox backwards compatibility on things, just like talking with other Xbox gamers and picking brains. It was really kind of cool. And I didn't feel like awkward or anything at all. It was just like, wow, all these people here, they had all these kind of cool things going on, tournaments, and then we got swag at the end with, like, get everybody getting a two-terabyte hard drive and, like, a pretty good headset to play on our Xbox and also PC and, like, cool shirts with, like, other games, like Code Vein and all that. And just all kinds of different things with, like, backpacks. And it was just really kind of cool to be rewarded as an Xbox gamer for, like, all of our support and all that. Because I've been on Xbox Live and for, like, over almost 12 years. Like, yeah. And I really liked all the games and the friends that I've acquired through Live, which is why I'm hesitant to jump over to another console. But... We'll kind of see how the Xbox One go, X goes and see how that goes from there because 
I still like Xbox. I still like the interface, and I really want to play some games, especially like Crackdown 3 and Sea of Thieves. Those are really up my alley, and I really like the superhero kind of stuff. So, then we had another kind of night that was like the next night, and we got to like talk to like Microsoft people and like see Phil Spencer, Aaron Greenberg, and all different kinds of people like talking and everything. They weren't like talking to like giving like panels or anything like that. They were just walking around, and we were like playing games on like Xbox One X's and all that. And I only got to really play. Minecraft PvP, and I'm not really into Minecraft, but I liked the PvP that they showed. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool, because there were lines for, like, Crackdown 3, Sea of Thieves. Now, I haven't gotten my hands on them, but I can't wait to play those. And we saw also Assassin's Creed Origins, and we got to have this kind of, like, tech demo of, like, what the Xbox One X can do and all that, and that was pretty cool, seeing all the different kind of things going on with it, and what you'll kind of be getting with the box, and what they're trying to accomplish, and to get a better idea of what the Xbox One X is as a product. And then, of course, we then go out, and we are ready to go to E3, pretty much. And I really kind of liked... I never had really, like, a bad time at the Xbox Fan Fest. It was pretty cool... We got to see what was going on with Xbox. We got to interact with some people at Xbox. And we got to play some stuff that's coming for Xbox. And I would definitely recommend trying to get into FanFest if you're an Xbox fan. And I believe that these kind of experiences should be more of what companies should be doing to kind of get other fans excited to market their products more so than E3 now. Because I went to E3, and of course this is one of the first times that it's been open to the public, and I got it because that had an X, they, with the Xbox Fan Fest, they gave you one to go, and I went, and I don't know what I was expecting. Granted, I have had expectations for E3 for years because I've wanted to go to E3 for years, to see what's going on, to interact with these media people to get to, to possibly get into the industry possibly by like talking to these people and seeing what's going on and picking their brains and like of course play testing some stuff since I've had that idea in my head the game industry as a whole has evolved to a point where there's like betas and alphas that you can get into as programs so that you don't really need to go there to kind of play these games and I'd seen that there were, like, a lot of people at E3 this year. And I saw a count on one website that it was close to, like, 70,000. And I don't know what it is, but I don't think I like conventions. And I don't say that because of, like, oh, I'm an antisocial person. It's just, if it's done like this, because if it's a convention done like this where there's, like, media and the public, and there's not a good division of what's going on, you're going to run into problems, because press people won't get to play things, and they won't be able to inform people about it. The public people won't get to play things, and they'll be pissed off about it, and won't come back. And if it, it needs to be kind of separate, I believe. Like, if Xbox did something, and E3 was kind of just media people, and you got people who are like, hey, you can go to E3 and kind of like mingle and all that, that would have been cool, and, like, of course, each kind of company could do a respective thing, and you've got, like, a controlled amount of people in there, so that way lines are more manageable. Industry people aren't going to be, like, accosted as much, and it just won't be an overall fuck fest. That's what I pretty much do this to, because the only game I got to play at E3 was, like, I was the outside... And I played an Alienware that had a Toby eye tracking that had Agents of Mayhem on it. Now, of course, I'm kind of interested in Agents of Mayhem, and it was kind of cool to see the tech demo. But everything else, I'm like, that's hours long wait. And this, I only went to the first day of E3 because this was just ridiculous, in my opinion, because you barely moved through. It was just insanity how many people were in there. It was hard to move around. And 
it looked like you would have to stand on two, line for like two hours to get to play any kind of game. And it's just really bad for everybody involved. As a consumer and just buying a ticket, you are unable to kind of like go around as easily and play the games because you have to, it's two halls and you have to, a long way to get through between both of them and it's just really not that well done and well executed. This really either needs to change form or change venues as well because the Los Angeles Convention Center, it was like nuts, man. I don't think they had enough room for that many people or were expecting that many people to do everything that was going on. It was just like, whoa. Something needs to be done here. And I hate to say that because I've loved watching E3. And I think that would be the better option for me at the moment. Like, continuing in the future because I didn't get that much information when I went to E3. Most of the stuff I got was after I got back to like a hotel room or something and looked up what was going on to see with like Nintendo and PlayStation and everybody else. Other than that, I'm like, I mean, I see this stuff, but it's like, okay. And like, I would have liked to have possibly played Destiny, but I'm like, okay, Destiny 2, I got that beta coming up. I can just wait on that. I would have liked to have played like Wolfenstein 2 or like go through for the Evil Within 2 thing, but it was like insanity with how many people were there. It's like, I, they've been like turning people away and line management was insane. And I think that if they're doing stuff with the public, they have to have a separation of it and be like, here's the industry people's portion and have it done at a location for them. And then here's the public portion because there was like 70,000 people there. There were not enough demos to effectively manage that many people. I'm talking like, yeah, they had nice banks of roads. I'm going to quickly estimate off that Destiny and like Call of Duty could have had 20 computers or whatever running it at once. When you want to say that there's like 70,000 people there, I'm going to say that there's going to be quite a few Destiny and possibly some Call of Duty fans. So, let's say about 10,000 want to play it. That is going to run into like line problems of like, oh, you could just wait to the last day to play it. With all those people, everybody probably planned on coming on the last day to play it. And it just would have been the same as the first day and the second day. It's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, they really need to fix what they're doing or completely retool it to such a way that it's just more manageable for people. Like, like I said, split it up and really have a public option for people to pay. Like, if you want to pay to get in and, like, do all this and then also maybe have some people run the game to do some marketing and be like, hey, tell your friends about this and all that because everybody can be a kind of influencer and a marketer to that extent. So that pe way people feel like they're getting more for their money and that way it's not as crazy as completely putting the industry people together with the public. I don't think that's a good idea and I think that the execution needs to be better with that. So... I overall was really disappointed in E3, but I overall really enjoyed Xbox Fan Fest. And I would highly recommend trying to get into, if you're a fan of Xbox, I would highly recommend trying to get into that because it was a pretty cool experience to like get to the people that like make your product and talk about your product and really believe in Xbox on the other side of the business side and then seeing them interact with you and trying to see what you're excited about and what your feedback is, is pretty sweet. And I think that that should be kind of how it goes from now on, that E3 might kind of go the way of just, it should just either, I don't think, it's really hard to say if it should do stuff like a convention and have a public option or just have E3 be just completely about the media people and then just have each corporation like Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, maybe even like some publishers make their events, invite some fans or like have contests and whatnot to get them in to like get them 
really hyped and motivated for everything to get them to play it for their own kind of things because putting them together like this was just not cool. And I think we're getting into the place that each company finds it more cost effective for them to do that kind of thing themselves to control that kind of thing and messaging themselves rather than just have E3 and have the public and be like, I was pissed off because I didn't get to play any games because everybody was in the way. And that's the consumer and the media person. You're pissing off two people at once. So those are my reactions to FanFest and E3. Uh, tell me what you guys think and what you thought of E3 and all the press conferences and everything. And I'll give you my reactions to what I think of like Sony and Nintendo and some other videos. So um, tell me what you think. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.